Hey guys, welcome, namaste. My name is Rachel and this is going to be an intuitive energy session based on the three main energies that I picked up on for this new moon in Scorpio happening on October 27th through 28th. So I wanna go over the three main energies that I meditated on and what I really got for what's going on with the collective. Then we're gonna go into a manifestation energy session, really brief, probably like five minutes or so to ground these energies in. And that seems to be um, a theme here, is this integration, this grounding process. So we really want to embody this energy, the energy of our manifestations, the energy of our intentions, the energy of truly being creators in this reality here on earth where we live. Okay, so what is the first energy that we are going to be experiencing? What's this new moon bringing in? The first thing that I got was, it came to me as the final purge, is the exact wording that I got. So some of you may have been feeling like shit's been really intense. Either something that you thought you've gotten over has come back and like, oh hey, still here. Or maybe something you know that you've been struggling with, that you've been trying to overcome, is really, really intensified. And I'm always reminded whenever I'm in, whenever I feel this energy or whenever somebody that I'm working with experiences this energy, I'm always reminded the story of the Buddha's enlightenment. And I know that I've probably, I know that I've talked about this on other videos, but for those of you who don't know the story, the Buddha wasn't born enlightened. The Buddha went on a spiritual journey of enlightenment as you are, as I am, as we as a collective are doing in, in mass amounts right now. And the Buddha decided he wanted to be enlightened now, right now. So he sat there and he's like, I'm not going to move until I'm enlightened. Well, the demon Mara came and now this demon Mara is, you can compare it to um, like Lucifer and, and Christianity. This is the demon of illusion and delusion. And this is essentially the ego. This is essentially the triggers, maybe the shadow side, you might want to call it. And so Mara comes to the Buddha. And first Mara tempts the Buddha with beautiful women, like his deepest desires. But the Buddha sees it for what it is, that it's just an illusion, that it's not real. And his enlightenment is more important than this illusion that he's experiencing. So he's like, no, that's cool. Like, you can present me with all the beautiful women. I'm still going to sit right here until I'm enlightened. And so Mara gets a little angrier. And I was like, okay, we're going to test you a little further. And then he tempts him with people charging at him, trying to elicit anger. He tempts him with scary demons. Really, his deepest fears are right in front of his face, but the Buddha knows it's an illusion. The Buddha knows it's his final test that Mara is losing his grip on the soul, on the Buddha. And he's doing everything that he possibly can. The Buddha can see it for what it is. And he stands strong in his conviction. Next morning, he was enlightened. And that's what I feel like we're going through at this moment. It's like the ego or the shadowy side is really or Mara or Maya or whatever you want to call the opposing force the contrasting force that we're trying to overcome and align with love it's it's realizing that it's losing its grip on us and its job as an opposing force is to keep us in illusion and keep us in delusion and and really suck us into these fears of these old egoic patterns. But we have been on this journey for quite a while and we can see it. Now that doesn't make it any less real. You can really be experiencing these strong energies. You can really be experiencing old thought patterns of doubt and fear and unworthiness and your mind is going in, you know, these, these cycles. That's very real, but it's not true. It's an illusion of the mind and the only truth is love. So how do we deal with this final purge? 
where we do so with aligning what is true, which is love, which is peace, which is empowerment, knowing that you are more than this mind, you're more than this body, you're more than the ego and your defense mechanisms. You are greater than those things. Just like the Buddha knew he was greater than Mara and anything that Mara would try to throw at him. And he just stayed centered in that. You can stay centered in who you know you truly are. And when Mara tries to throw all these old patterns or belief systems and know that Mara knows, your ego knows your biggest wounds, your biggest triggers, what, what really gets at your core the most. When those come up and when those are triggered, if you can give those love, if you can give yourself love during the process, then this dissolves the contrast. So we think that the contrast is really like this, this bad demon, right? It's always like in scriptures, it's always presented as, as this evil force of nature, something that's trying to control us. But really, what the contrast is, is a window into our truth, is a window into our soul. It shows you who you are by showing you who you are not. It shows you what is real by showing you what is an illusion and what's a delusion. And if you're watching this, then you're absolutely at the point now in your growth, in your evolution, to see what is real and what isn't. What is true and what isn't. So allow yourself to go through this final purge and remain as centered as you possibly can be. And this is an awakening. It's awakening you to an entirely new reality, to an entirely new perspective, to an entirely new way of being. This doesn't mean that the delusions and illusions and all this stuff is gone forever. The Buddha would often talk about in some of the stories having tea with Mara, where he would go and there, he would be talking to large groups of people and Mara would be there in the background and you know one of his um, princesses or disciples would be like, oh no, Mara's here, what are we gonna do? And Buddha would have tea with him. So, like, hey old friend, I see you. You're still here. You're not gonna affect me though. So that's where we're getting to. We're getting to a place where we can embody the true essence of who we are, which is love, which is a powerful manifester and creator, which is empowered one with source, one with the divine, more than the mind, more than the ego. And know that any contrast is giving you an opportunity to align with that. Okay, so the second energy that this new moon is bringing up is really um, resonating with the lower chakra. So the first three chakras, your root chakra, your sacral chakra, and your solar plexus chakra. It's a very much of a grounding energy. So many of us, not all, but many of us who are on some sort of spiritual path tend to be really, really good at the higher chakras. We tend to be really good at trying to open our third eye or trying to open our heart chakra or like opening our crown, getting this guidance. We're good at visualization and imagination and setting intentions. But if you cannot ground this into your experience here right now, as this living, breathing being, as this human that you are, then it's going to stay up in the ether so you are being asked to ground down your manifestations, to ground this energy now into your reality. So how do we do this? Well, there's a couple different ways that you can do this, one of which is just really feeling grounded and present in the moment. So if you wanna do this with me now, really focus all of your energy on your tailbone, on your root chakra, call your energy into this chakra into your beingness right here feel if your feet are touching the floor feel your feet on the floor feel what it's like to just be in this body now yes we're we're spiritual beings but we're having a human experience 
You're making things happen on this human plane of existence. So we must ground, feel yourself in the here and now. Now raise your awareness up to that sacral chakra. Feel the energy there. This is where you can feel some emotional, just any emotions. I was gonna say triggers, but this is where you can feel some, any emotions that are being brought up within you. What do those feel like? No judgment, you're just allowing. Bring your energy up to right below your rib cage, right behind your belly button, wherever you feel like your solar plexus chakra is. This is your empowerment center. Can you take all of the energy from your intentions, all of the energy from your soul, your oversoul, your state of being, and ground it now in your lower three chakras right here? Breathe into this empowerment. Breathe into this presence. You were put in this body for a reason. Your soul incarnated into who you are, into the manifestation of you as a reason. So we don't want to escape it. We want to ground our truest essence into this manifestation of us. So from this place, from this place of being and presence, you are then wanting to put into action, actually start to live and be who it is that you know you truly are, what it is that you want to manifest. So we're moving beyond intentions now into action stage. So continue in every moment that you remember to ground within this experience and ask yourself, what is something that I can do that's going to help ground my intentions when I'm trying to create into the here and now? And maybe that is cultivating a deeper sense of security in yourself, being okay with just being, you know, not feeling like you need to escape into your thoughts or in your mind, but just allow yourself to be in the present moment. Maybe it is um, creating a plan or prioritizing in some way. Maybe it's balancing your finances. Like these are all very grounded energies, but this is how we take the energy from our thoughts. Thoughts create, right? Emotions create, energy creates, but it does not, it can create just kind of spontaneously, but you have far more power over how it creates once you are grounded in yourself. And you can allow these manifestations to um, uh, to manifest, to, you can create them in the here and now once you ground this energy in and allow yourself to be who you know you are. So living from the space as if what you want is currently existing no longer imagining it or visualizing it, but living it. That's what we're being called to do during this new moon. And the last piece that is, the last piece of energy that this new moon is ushering in is the final breaking of old contracts, breaking of old vows, breaking of these old thought patterns that are still holding us back on some sort of energetic level and really living from this new space as if these bonds were completely broken. So what do I mean by that? What all kind of goes along with this grounding these lower three chakras and this final purge, okay? So you are being shown now through your thoughts, through your emotions, through your energy, certain contracts, energy patterns, vrittis, like whirlpools of energy that you're you're still holding on to somewhere in your being. You're being shown this. And you have the opportunity to release them for good. Set the intention, make a statement, and we're going to go through a little bit of this in the session that we're going to do in just a minute or two. So make a statement declaring that you are breaking any vows of poverty, that you are you know, releasing any energies or feelings of unworthiness here and forever, so be it and so it is. Like declare it with your words, with your intention. And see what it needs. So maybe it's an inner child that needs a little love. Like can you just love yourself through it? 
Or maybe it needs to be ignored. Maybe this is something, this, this force has had so much power over you and it needs to be completely ignored and for you to use your power of focus to align with your intention rather than allowing that to sweep you back into an old pattern. So you play it by ear how you're going to release them. Like I said, you intend to. You make a statement when they come up that you're just done with it. You release it now and forever through all lifetimes, all parts of your being. Or you can love it if you just need some love. Maybe it's just an inner child who needs some love. Or ignore it if you know you've given far too much of your power to a thought pattern, to an energy pattern, to a feeling of unworthiness. And then you begin to live from this brand new space. So I want to give you just an example of something that's been playing out in my life um, that's been a breaking of a contract. So um, any of you who know about life paths, I'm a life path eight, which means that I one of my biggest life lessons is the mastery of money and the mastery of leadership and empowerment. And that is my, when I got my birth chart done in astrology, knowing how to provide for myself was one of my biggest lessons, like why I incarnated here. <laughs> so as you know, whenever it's one of your biggest lessons, then <laughs> often you experience the exact opposite of what it is that you're destined to do for you know the first half of your life or especially throughout childhood and this is exactly what happened so i didn't grow up without money but i thought i did um just because the mindset that um both my parents held very unhealthy mindsets around money but in completely opposite ways <laughs> so it really i grew up with very unhealthy but completely opposite ways of handling money so either thinking like i don't have enough i i would like do weird things so like i would go to like a um like a a career fair and they'd have like free pens and a whole bunch of like chintzy little stuff and i would like need to get all of it i didn't need that and they would just sit like in like a little tote bag that i brought home for like you know two years until i eventually like gave it to goodwill or threw it away but i had that like weird like i'm not going to be provided for or then I would like make a really big purchase or like I would have this need for like to have like nice things. So I'd buy a designer bag or like, you know, like spend too much money on clothes or whatever. And then I would feel guilty about it. And then it was like, I don't have enough, but I'm going to spend, spend, spend. But now I don't have enough. So it was like this back and forth. Right. So whenever you begin now, now that I recognize it within me, I can see these ingrained patterns for what they are are and one of the ingrained patterns that has been within me is constantly <laughs> again it's that like polarity but a part of me always wants to get the cheapest of everything now the other part of me is like but i'm gonna spend 400 dollars on a bag but my cereal is going to be generic like it's just so <laughs> we're trying to get to that middle ground well we are getting to the middle ground but it's um so the cheapest of everything so I would go to the store and I would purposely look for like the little, like the little extra tags that they put when something's on sale. And even if it was like 20 cents cheaper, I would get that box of cereal or whatever it is because it was on sale. When I would look on Amazon for something, like in my, the space that I'm in, like the office space, I was looking for these blackout curtains. Um, so whenever I'm doing energy sessions, it's dark. And I looked for the cheapest curtains and I had to go through, I think I sent back like four different kinds of curtains because my brain was like, you got to get the cheapest, you got to get the cheapest, you can't spend rather than this is an investment for your office space, which is your life purpose, what you are doing. Don't you think that maybe you could spend and just get like mid grade curtains? <laughs> yeah. So I've been noticing that within myself. And even though that is a tendency that I still go towards, last time that I went to the grocery store, <laughs> I really wanted this cereal because it was healthy and it was organic and I've never saw it before. And I love cereal, even though I know it's bad for you. It's like my weakness. If I had a drug of choice, it would probably be cereal. And it like pained me almost to pay full price. <laughs> 
but I put it in my bag and I was like, I'm going, this is going to come back to me. And the same thing happened. I went shopping and I got myself some new fall clothes and new fall sweaters. And there was a big part of me that's like, you can't afford this. Don't do this. You can't afford it. And like, I wanted to just look at the price tags of everything. Now keep in mind, I went to TJ Maxx. So it's not like I'm like shopping at Saks or anything. <laughs> I went to TJ Maxx and I'm like, and I had to break myself out of it. I said, no, you'll feel good when you have some new nice chunky sweaters and some nice fall clothes. And so I give this example to get you thinking about how your contracts, how your bonds, how these old energy patterns show up ever so subtly in your experience and how you always listen to them. And maybe finances isn't anything for you, but this can play out in terms of love, in terms of worthiness. However it plays out, you are given the opportunity to look at what is happening from a third perspective almost, from like a bird's eye view, and you are able to make a different choice. And you might have to affirm to yourself. You might have to set the intention while you're doing it. But the less you feed into these old patterns, the more you're naturally breaking these old vows, these old bonds, these old constraints that have kept you in stuck and stagnant places in, in certain areas of your life for many, many years, or maybe even many, many lifetimes. It's the chance to see them for what they are, and you can make the decision to buy that full price box of cereal, <laughs> or to do something that makes you a little uncomfortable, but affirm to yourself, the universe will take care of me. My true essence of love is love. My true essence is abundance. There is no shortage of these energies. So anything that is telling me there is lack, anything that is telling me I can't trust, is an old contract. It is an old bond. And you are given so many opportunities every single day to break these, as long as you don't get sucked up into them. All right, so let's just go over a quick meditation, little energy session. If you don't know me, I'm an intuitive energy healer, so I'm gonna be channeling just some high vibrational energy to you. Close your eyes, if you can. If you cannot, then you can do this with your eyes open. And just start to breathe and really connect into those lower chakras. Just doing a couple sacred Reiki symbols to help me connect with your energy. This helps the energy go across all time and space and protect you wherever you are, protects your space really allows you to open up for some healing, some releasing. So can you feel those lower three chakras? Can you feel your energy grounded in the here and now, grounded in your body? What does this feel like for you? Breathe in to your lower body. Breathe into your root chakra, the base of your tailbone. Breathe in to your sacral chakra, right below your belly button. And breathe in now to your solar plexus, right above your belly button. This is your essence, this is your energy. Now call into your energy field, into your mind's eye, the life the reality that you are manifesting at this moment as we speak. What is your intention? What is the life that you are going to choose to live? Envision the people that are there, the emotions that you feel, the abundance that you have, the lifestyle that you're living. Now ground this energy into your beingness right now. 
see this energy of this visualization or this intention merging with your energy. Going all the way down through your crown chakra, your third eye, throat, heart, down to those lower chakras, your solar plexus, your sacral, your root. This energy now goes all the way down through your legs, down through your feet, into Mother Earth, your growing roots set in this intention. And now we're grounded in this new energy. The energy of what needs to be released becomes ever more present. So we ask, what is something that I need to release right now? And give yourself just a few moments to feel, think of anything, all things that you are ready to permanently release in this here and now moment. Now wrap all of those up into an energetic bubble and view this bubble as outside of yourself. We now cut any cords to these energies. We release, dissolve this energies, these energies, any contracts, any vows from this lifetime, past lifetimes, across all time and space, all dimensions, all realities, from this moment, back in time, forward in time, now and forever, so be it and so it is. Take a deep breath in, out, it is done. Agree to this by saying yes. Now just breathe into this feeling. And we ask now if there's anything that we should know, if there's anything that we should be doing in the physical that can help really aid in grounding these manifestations in, will we please get guidance on those? And I'll give you some time to listen for any guidance of something that you want to physically do. But know if nothing comes to you, it will come to you throughout your days and weeks to come. And again, feel yourself in your body, fully present in all of your chakras, very grounded. Just going to energetically wipe off your aura, wipe mine off, energetic field. I'm disconnecting from your energy. So be it, and so it is. We give thanks to universe, any light beings, our higher selves, our over souls, God, angels, guides. And thank you for tuning in. Uh, so if you are interested, I do offer a free Reiki healing MP3 on my website, and I'm going to start a newsletter in November, so like a week, yeah, um, where I give an energy update for every month, and it's only going to be for those of you who are on my email list. Uh, so it's just a little perk. I want to become more interactive with you guys through email, which I haven't been good at in the past, but we're shifting things. So. If you would like a free energy session, go to my website, sign up for that, and then you'll also be signed up for the newsletter. Uh, please like and subscribe and share and help the channel grow, help spread this message. Thank you all so much. I'm wishing you a beautiful new moon. Till next time, love and light.